I have to start this video off by saying a huge thank you to Mark for your $30 donation. You use the donation link in the description below my videos and you are helping support the channel and I really appreciate it. And in the note it says, Grim, thanks for the great videos. I really appreciate the time you take to give me new ideas for PvP specs. Your character is Evil Forces at Wolfsbane. I will be adding you to my friends list and also putting a note on there that you are a big supporter of my channel and anytime you want to do anything just let me know and we'll have some fun in the game and in the future guys if you do donations like he did make sure you leave a, a note of some sort that way i can read it out in the video and show my appreciation for everything you guys do what's up guys graham here it's giveaway time once again if you left a comment in the comment section below of my last weekend video well it's been a couple weeks now because i missed out on the last weekend video and i really apologize for that guys but hopefully i can make it up to you but if you left a comment in the, that video then you are entered into the giveaway of 5,000 credits of whatever you want from the rift store as long as it's under the 5,000 credit threshold and it is giftable. And the winner of that giveaway is, bam, right there. Congratulations, we will be sending you a message on YouTube just shortly, so make sure you check your inbox, that way we can find out what you want from the Rift Store. This week's giveaway is the Typhoon edition of the new expansion, which unlocks the earring slots on your characters makes you attuned to the plane of water and all the other good stuff so if you'd like to win that prize all you have to do is leave a comment in the comment section below this very video with your character name and server and also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and hit that like button the winner will be announced in the next weekend video good luck everyone What's up guys, today we're going into a very different type of build, but it's a very fun build and you'll see exactly what I mean just shortly. But basically what this is, is it's specced out and geared out to be as fast as possible of a speed warrior. Now let's go ahead and go right into the soul build so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, if you'd like to see this build on a web page instead of having to pause the video or squint your eyes at the screen or any of that, then go ahead and check out the description below this video and I will have a link to the website where you can see the build. And also I'll have all the macros down there as well as the K alerts so that you can just copy and paste as you need. All right, so we went 61 points into Warlord here and nine points into Rift Blade, which five points goes into Elemental Flux. 2 points into Surging Energy and 2 points into Elemental Empowerment. And then we went 6 points into Beastmaster, which 5 points goes into Swiftness, 1 point goes into Call of Stone. Alright, our Masteries are Enduring Survival, Steadfast Soul, Runner's Training, Deliberate Strikes, and Fluid Movements. Alright, let's go ahead and explain this because I'm pretty bad about explaining things at times. I tend to just show you guys the builds and say, this is what I run, use it, it'll work. Well, I'll go ahead and explain it for you this time. All right. So as you see, we went pretty much into speed builds here. We went uh, the five points into swiftness. So with Beastmaster increases your run speed by 10%. Well, you have a buff in Rift Blade that increases your movement speed by 10% with Avatar of Wind. All right. You also have Runner's Training here, which increases your movement speed by another 10%. You can see where this is going. It's absolutely a lightning bolt of a speed build. Now, your uh, masteries can be changed around however you want. Some of the things you may not like that I picked. This is what I enjoy, so modify as you need. I would just highly recommend you keep the speed boost if you can, because that's what makes this build tick. All right, now I've heard of other people running similar type of builds, but they went with Paragon and some other stuff as a main soul. You can change around the main soul all you like. It, it can be anything from Reaver to Paragon to Warlord or whatever. I chose Warlord because you don't have any kind of range attacks with this melee build. And with Warlord, you got several pulls, you got, you know, a couple of charges, you've got... Uh, a snare you've got a lot of things to really buff up this build to where the disconnects just are not going to happen you have also uh the forced march that makes you run even faster 
So it's going to be one of those things that whenever somebody tries to get away from you, you're going to be pulling them, you're going to be charging them, you're going to be snaring them, and you're going to be running at insane amounts of speed and nobody's going to be able to get away from you nobody is going to be able to catch you it's going to be the funnest spec that i've run in a while trust me all right let's go into the buffs here we got ready posture we got deadly posture call of stone avatar of wind storm blade fluid movements and of course any guild or planar buffs that you feel like running also, we have on our bar defensive posture and recovery posture just in case you're not getting the heals that you want and you want to go ahead and go with a more defensive stance and be able to take more of a hit. All right, let's go into the macros here. Now, if you'd like to copy and paste these macros, they will be in the description below for you to do just that. Feel free to look down there and refer to those. All right, we have the builder macro here. Now we're throwing a lot of things in this because this build runs a certain way that's gonna really mesh well with these kind of macros. Now we have force march in our builder macro. Now a lot of people would want that on a separate button normally, but this is a speed build. We want to be as fast as possible at all times. So force march needs to be on cooldown as much as possible. It also has Eye of the Storm, which is going to snare your opponent and make it to where you're going to overrun them even more. It is insane how this works. I can't wait to show you some more friends where I'm using it. But, and then we go into King of the Hill and everything else that is normally used in a builder macro. All right, let's go ahead and go to the finisher macro here. Now we have Killing Field in this, which a lot of people want on a separate button. I put it here to make it easier on you guys. Also, it's going to be part of our burst, so it really meshes well to reduce your buttons and put it in here. All right, we have our charge macro, which I have Thunder Sleep in it. If you do not have the planar attunement ability Thunder Sleep, take it out of the macro. I have it in there because I have it. All right, then we have a pull macro. And then we have a heal macro. This is another thing that some people like to separate because if you hit the button once, it'll cast Battlefield Medic and heal you. If you hit it a second time, it'll cast No Permission to Die and make it to where if somebody is delivering a killing blow against you, it'll actually keep you alive and heal you up. All right, so let's go into the buttons down here. We have our Builder macro. We have our Finisher macro. We have Battle Surge here, Tactical Surge, Battlefield Experience, our Charge Macro, our Pull Macro, Heal Macro, uh, Defensive Maneuver, which is our Leap Back. We have Break Free on a separate button. Do not put it in your macros, guys. Don't do it. All right. Then we have Neck Punch, which is our Interrupt. And then we have Piercing Thrust. All right. Let's go into how to play this build. It's actually really easy but you want to make sure that you're doing it the right way and really take advantage of all the benefits that this has to offer all right so let's say that we are starting a fight now you do not want to run this type of build in like a white fall steps or something like that because that's one of those war fronts that ranged attacks are really strong so this build does not have ranged attacks it's meant to be a smother uh, build it's going to be where you're running up to your opponent charging at them and they're not going to be able to get away but you're going to have to be at the front and taking the damage if you're in a big war front like that which is not usually what you want to be doing so let's say that you find an opponent in black garden or something like that and you charge in Okay, first thing we want to do is we want to use our Builder Macro. Now mind you, we have super speed. We are going to be so fast during this entire time. If our opponent is running away from us, we're going to be able to stick on them and they're not going to be able to get away. If they start to get away, you've got charges, you've got pulls, you've got so many things at your disposal. Use them because they are so strong. All right. So our first priority is to get our surges up. Now we have battle surge and also tactical surge. Now whenever I charge into battle and I do not have any surges up, usually I'll use those even if I just have one combo point. But for the sake of making this video, I'll go ahead and use them whenever I have three combo points so they last longer. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get three combo points and get our other surge up. 
Now we've got both of our surges and we're going to start spamming our builder macro and then naturally go into the finisher macro which is going to pop our killing field. Now once you have that done you can of course go into your burst which is going to be battlefield experience and that's going to make it to where for the next 15 seconds your king of the hill which is in your builder macro and your killing field which is in your finish macro is going to be off cooldown. Also what's going to be off cooldown is your charge. So if you want to pop that macro, people are not going to be able to get away from you because you can charge them over and over and over. So let's go ahead and refresh our buffs real fast. Get our surges going because I was talking too long. Okay, so we have our surges up. And we're going to go ahead and hit our finisher. Now we're going to hit our burst, which is going to be battlefield experience. Start spamming your builder, finisher, builder. And it's going to be popping king of the hill over and over and then killing field over and over. And these guys are not going to be able to get away from you. They are going to be absolutely getting destroyed in front of you because you've got so much run speed. You've got charges that are off a of cooldown at all times while that burst is going on. It's going to be so powerful. Trust me, you are going to love this build as long as you're playing it in the right environment. You know, don't play it to where it's like a mass of people and a mass of people because that's where range is going to prevail. But this, like in Maze, and also when their Whitefall Steps kind of breaks up, and you know, just a lot of different Warfronts would be really good with this build. Now, so you got in mind how the build works. The, the surges need to be up at all times, and then you want to go ahead and pop your Battlefield Experience whenever you're ready to burst. Now, there is another attack here that a lot of people will say that you need to be using which is probably true. I just don't use it that often, but it's up to you whether you want to or not. And that's piercing thrust because piercing, piercing thrust works really well if used after a finisher. So whenever you pop your finisher, you may go to piercing thrust and then go back to builder, builder, finish, piercing thrust. And that's going to hit really hard. The thing is, is that with with this build, it's such a fast build. You're moving so fast. You're charging people. You're pulling people. You're uh, just absolutely destroying everybody. To really get in the habit of using piercing thrust after your finisher is kind of tedious. But it's probably a DPS increase if you want to use it. I just don't use it that often. It's up to you guys. But... All right, let's go ahead and go over some of the other things. Of course, you got your multiple charges here. You got multiple pulls that you can use in the in your macro. And the pulls are really strong. If you're not pulling people whenever you're in a big fight, then you're doing it all wrong. Whenever you pull your opponent from their, their team into your team, that makes it to where all your team is going to target that guy and everybody's going to focus fire on that one person and kill them right off the bat. So pulling people is very, very important. All right, of course you got your heal macro that you can pop it and it will heal you. If you use it again, it will use your no permission to die, which will prevent you from dying right at that second if somebody is delivering a killing blow. Then we got our defensive maneuver, which I use this all the time. Say I'm in the front lines, you know, hammering away at somebody. And then all of a sudden I notice that I'm getting targeted way too much. I'll go ahead and use my leap back and then of course take off, you know, pop my heel or whatever I need to do. And look at the speed, man. And this isn't even with force march going on. It's absolutely insane. This build is so much fun. Okay, then you have Neck Punch, which is your interrupt. So make sure you're using that to interrupt those pesky uh, healers and all that stuff. But the bad thing about this interrupt is it's a melee range interrupt, so you have to be right on them in order to use it. And then, of course, I've got my Piercing Thrust if I want to use that after a finisher so it hits really hard. Uh, I don't use it that often, like I said, but it's up to you guys. 
So that's basically it for this build. It's a very, very strong build that just smothers your opponents and you get to feeling bad because you're just, they're trying to run away and you're like doing laps around them. You're so fast and you're killing them so easy. It is insane how easily this kills people. Now, mind you, you can use this build with a lot of other uh, main souls if you want. You can go Paragon, you can go Reaver and kite people really well with the Reaver spec. There's lots of things you can go with combining it with the speed build like we have on this, such as the Beastmaster and Riftblade. But for Warlord, since we don't have much uh, for ranged attacks, we got to make sure that we close the distance as much as possible, and Warlord allows that with its multiple charges, multiple pulls, its snare, and all that, which... If you run Paragon with the speed build, you're not going to have all that going on and it's going to be real easy for people to disconnect from you and all of a sudden you're not going to be able to smother them as well. You're, you're going to be fast, but if you don't have your charges, don't have your pulls, anybody with the teleport or elite back may be able to get away from you enough and that's not going to work. You want to make sure that you're smothering these people and they have no chance of surviving. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to Rift, make sure you use my referral link in the description below because it gives you a cloak in the game. It gives you a weapon enchants. It gives you an extra bag, which anybody that starts Rift knows how important bag space is. And also, it puts you on my friends list and me on your friends list so we can play together once you're max level. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the build and everything to do with this video. As usual, my name is Grim, and I will see you next time.